G'day frothers, welcome back to the bench and uh, once again we've got another test for a DeWalt tool. This one is the little bumblebee, the 172. And today she's getting a runtime test in granite, so uh, let's get started. So as usual I'm using the uh, De Trois 4 cutter bits and this time I'm going for 10 millimeters because smaller rotary hammers I'm just going to do 10 millimeters as well, try to do that with all of them. And 10 millimeters because uh, that is a very commonly used climbing bolt, the old 10 mil or like 3 8 uh, wedge anchor. And for this test I'm going about 60 mils in, so that's about right for the 10 by 65 millimeter drill bit. Uh, truth be told you probably do want to drill a little bit deeper than that in uh, in real life, but you know for this kind of test uh, It's all good as usual. We've got a full battery. Oh, actually this is a bit of a disadvantage of this design is You got to pull the battery off to check it but full full battery and uh, we basically just drill as many holes as we can until she stops working So uh, let's take a look you parrots uh, so very impressive again so she got 43 so not quite as good as the Makita uh, but still very comparable very uh, very nicely done there from the little bumblebee and next up so same thing again but slightly bigger drill bit so that's 12 millimeter and 12 millimeter or you know around half an inch or so is a very common size for this kind of sleeve anchor very common size for uh, rock climbing anchors in general all right, let's see how she goes with the runtime in the 12 millimeter bits. The little bumblebee, the DCH172 did really really well far better than I was expecting actually this is a bloody amazing but uh, up here she did almost as well as the bigger hammers getting 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 18 19 20 21 22 23 24 25 26 27 and and a bit I guess it's only, it's only that far in. Uh, bloody hell, what a little cracker. All right, very nicely done. So she got 27 there. A very, a very valiant effort from the little guy there. Uh, obviously not as much as the bigger tools, but again, not as much as the Makita either. So it really seems like, you know, DeWalt is, is, is sort of going for power rather than runtime because they do tend to drill a bit faster, but then they also run down a little bit faster too. Right, and so something else that I can actually get out of these sort of tests is how long the, the motor itself is actually running for uh, off a single battery. So uh, this is a bit of a rough measurement, but you know, if you just multiply the number of holes by the time per hole, you get a rough idea of how long the motor is actually running for. Uh, and uh, if we look, take a look at that, we end up with about 12 minutes of runtime for this little guy. And if we compare that to the bigger DeWalt's, you get nine minutes and you get about eight minutes, eight and a half minutes. So um, that's something that I was always interested in, in doing these tests is uh, how much of a difference does the motor size make? So the bigger hammers are gonna have a bigger motor 
means they can you know do bigger drill bits they can drill bigger holes but does that mean it takes more juice to turn and uh, yeah, it's, it sure seems like it. Like a smaller motor is gonna be more efficient. So, you know, pound for pound, uh, you're probably gonna get more, um, more runtime out of a smaller motor just because uh, you don't need a big motor to, to drill little holes, you know? So that's, that's another one of these hypotheses that I've been kind of testing with this sort of stuff. And it does look like it's the case, but Around this size that we've seen so far, if we like, if we look at the the DCH 263 and the 133, like th that effect isn't really the dominant effect uh, because they're still getting more holes. They're just doing the work faster, and although the battery runs down faster, you know they still end up with more holes because they've just got a higher impact force, more power, whatever it is. So um, yeah, it's a, that's just another thing I've been looking out for. Now, when I'm doing these tests, you may have noticed in a little time lapse that I've got a, a, a little tub of water next to me and I'm always dipping the, the bit in there to try and cool it off. But in spite of this one having the lower RPM, I found that its bit was just cooking and it was really hard to keep it, uh, you know, keep it cool. So normally I would dip them every, I don't know, two or three holes or something like that. So that's, that's the, the bit from one of the other drills. Uh, and then that's the one from the the 172 and uh, yeah take a look at that it's you know getting pretty got pretty cooked you can see the bluing there and everything it was really hard to keep this cool this drill bit and uh, I think the reason why is basically because it spent so much longer in the hole so you know this little guy had well almost 30 seconds uh, of drilling per hole and even though it's it's not working as hard it's not as powerful it's not revolving as quickly. It's just spending a lot more time in the hole. And that meant this thing had, you know, almost twice as much time to heat up. And so it was a real bitch to try and keep this thing cool. So, you know, pretty important to try and keep it, keep it cool when you're doing a, a runtime test as well, because, you know, if this just wears down too fast, then you're not really getting the true result. You're measuring how, how long a drill bit lasts, not how, how well your drill does. And another thing about the heat is that when I'm doing this, uh, the, these long tests, I do uh, have my blower there so I can cool the tool down. You know, I, I guess I could just, you know, let it cool down passively, but that would basically take too long. So the DeWalt's in general did feel really cool to use, probably cooler than the Makita's, you know, subjectively. I haven't measured this, but they seem to run cooler than the Makita's or at least uh, cooler to the touch. Uh, partly because the vents on, on these guys are just so big, you know, that's the, that's the inside casing of the, um, the hammer mechanism you can see in there. Blast air in there, blast air in there. They seem to run a bit cooler than the other ones that I've tested. Um, so yeah, while, I, while I'm doing these long tests, you know, just sort of every now and then when it feels hot, it's pretty subjective, but you know, I still do like to just uh, get, get out the heat camera and take a look at how, how hot they are going. Uh, in general, the DeWalt's felt cooler to the touch, uh, and they, uh, compared to some of the other ones I've taken, you know, I, I, I haven't set up a proper experiment for this, but, you know, just sort of anecdotally, you know, they'd be getting up to around sort of 60, 60 degrees Celsius, uh, no idea what that is in Fahrenheit, um, whereas some of the other tools I've tested would be getting up to more like 70 or 80, uh, so, yeah, you know, interesting, that is something I do want to explore further, because the, the, the long-term performance of these tools is really going to depend on how cool they can be kept. And the DeWalt's have giant vents on them compared to some of the others. So, you know, some, something I'm kind of trying to keep an eye on. So I guess the last thing I wanted to talk about was the wobble. Oh, man. Uh, pretty, pretty, oh, I don't know, a bit disconcerting even. This little guy in its test, it actually developed a pretty bad wobble. Um, <clears throat> not sure where that came from. Uh, I'm not sure if you can see it there, but I can feel it a little bit. Um, that's pretty common in rotary hammers to get, you know, a bit of a wobble, especially if you're chipping. I don't do chipping, so um, it wouldn't have come from that. I've also only used this really for the test that you've seen on the video. So I haven't used this drill super heavily. Um, and yeah, a bit, a bit disappointing to have such a wobble going on because a lot of the holes actually came out kind of star-shaped. 
which is pretty bad. Um, I, you know, when I was doing the test, I was really careful to make sure the rock uh, that I was drilling was held down really tight. It's, um, you know, it's it's seated with uh, big bricks, big bit of concrete, so it's got hard, uh, hard uh, pressure against it, and then also a lot of weight from just bags of gravel. Uh, it wasn't going anywhere. You know, you can see that on the on the video too. Uh, it's got the little dust dancing around, but you know that happens when you're drilling a whole cliff as well. So the rock was not moving. It definitely came from this, and uh, I don't know. The drill bit seems okay. Oh, let's see if we can check. Uh, with the tape on there, I can't really tell. But it didn't seem to the drill to be the drill bit. Um, yeah, so. I have heard, I am concerned, because you know, DeWalt has been really good, I'm very impressed with how they go, but I have heard they're pretty prone to a wobble. So, this this one especially, I've heard from a couple of people, someone even mentioned in the comments that they get a bad wobble too. This one definitely does have a wobble. The other drill, um, the, the 263, it doesn't do that yet. This one does, and it got that pretty soon. Um, so that that, I'm thinking maybe that is maybe a clue to the whole uh, mystery of why this one is so cheap. So anyway, uh, thanks a lot for joining us guys. And um, that's that's about it from the Bumblebee and I. Uh, we will catch you later. And you know, as usual, if you're into this sort of stuff, chuck us a subscribe. Don't bother with the notifications because you know, we all have too many bloody notifications. Uh, and anyway, catch us later.